people are very busy these days. W would you agree with me when I say that? Uh, we Americans are so consumed with making a living, nurturing our families, and pursuing our dreams during the week that our batteries are totally drained come the weekend. In response, we spend the majority of the rest of our time recharging in front of the TV or on Facebook, chillaxing in a campground or a casino, playing video games or enjoying other hobbies. We just need a little break from the daily grind from time to time, right? Do you agree with me? Just, just from time to time, a break from the daily grind. But how much free time do we Americans actually get to enjoy each weekend? If you're like most Americans, it's hardly enough time to even get excited about. A new survey found that the average American, the average American adult, uh, only has four and a half hours a week to enjoy to themselves. But the survey also said that if the average American uses those four and a half hours for chillaxing or for enjoying themselves, they will still have 14 undone items on their to-do list come Monday morning when it rolls around. Clearly, clearly, many Americans are seriously time-deprived. And for American Christians, time deprivation is an egregious problem with eternal consequences. Why? Well, according to the Bible, if you're a Christian, you have an inherent part-time job, being an ambassador for the kingdom of God. In fact, the first century Christian missionary Paul wrote this in the Bible. He said, we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Jesus when we urgently say to people, come back to God. But even more so, it was Jesus himself who made this role obligatory on behalf of every Christian. He said this in Matthew 29, 19, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And he went on to say in Acts 1.8, you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus has commissioned every single one of us, all of his followers, to go and be his ambassadors to the world. But if we can't even use our four and a half hours without falling behind on our to-do list, how in heaven's name are we ever going to manage a little extra time to work on the mission of Jesus, to help people discover, trust, and follow Jesus? This, my friends, is a serious problem. And if we don't do our job, souls will be lost. The consequences are eternal. And by the way, this is a problem that we all share. Several months ago, I was on my way to a church-related appointment, and I was running just barely on time as usual. And on the way, I saw a man, and I thought to myself that maybe the Lord was compelling me to stop and engage him. But COVID had just come on the scene, and I had already had an appointment in my book, and so I just kept going. I literally ignored Jesus that day. Oh, I could claim that I was being a good pastor, keeping my pastor-made appointment, but I was a terrible ambassador to the kingdom of God because I let time get in my way. You know, I believe from my position as a pastor that allowing time to get in the way of the mission of Jesus is one of Satan's most effective countermeasures in the 21st century. If we, the church, are too busy doing life and don't have enough time or money or whatever it is to help the poor and share the good news about Jesus to unbelieving people, the mission clearly suffers. And for us at Discovery Fellowship, 
A church whose mission statement demands that we help people discover, trust, and follow Jesus, well, that, my friends, is a very serious problem. But it gets even more complicated than that. Did you know that together, all of us together, are the body of Christ? Did you know that together we, Jesus followers, each and every one of us are his body, his hands and his feet? Now, this is a heavenly mystery, but it is, it's, it's something that all true believers must know, understand, and accept. The church, you and I, we are the body of Christ. Paul wrote about it in Ephesians chapter 5. Listen to what he said. He said, we are members of Christ's body. This is a great mystery. But it is an illustration of the way Jesus and the church are one. We are one with Jesus. We are the body of Christ. Okay, I'm going to say it one more time. We are the church the body of Christ. Apparently, while Jesus is away in heaven, waiting for God to give him the go-ahead to come back and take us to be where he is, we are called to do the work of building his kingdom here in Jesus' place, in Jesus' name. Just as though we were Jesus himself. Listen again to these words from the Bible from 2 Corinthians 5.20. Paul is speaking here. He said, we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Jesus when we urgently say to people, come back to God. So we're not just ambassadors for Jesus yeah, we speak for him, but we're also his hands and his feet, his arms and his legs, his mouth and his voice. We are collectively called to do the mission of Jesus, so I want you to know this first and foremost today. And if you turn to your notes, you'll find this first fill in the blank. Number one, I want you to know that true Jesus followers build his kingdom here on earth. The word build is your fill in the blank. True Jesus followers build his kingdom here on earth. We help people discover, trust, and follow Jesus. And you can call it a hobby. You can call it a part-time job. You can call it a lifestyle. You can call it a calling. You can call it whatever you want. The mission of Jesus is our God-given responsibility. <coughs> but I also want to recognize this. Most American Christians in the 21st century don't have time to do it. You've only got four and a half hours a week. <coughs> and if you use those up on yourself, then your to-do list continues to stack up and you enter into Monday already behind. That's just a fact. Most American Christians are so time deprived that they struggle sometimes during the week just to make it to church. Let alone go volunteer to help the hungry one hour a week or even half an hour a week at the local food pantry. <clears throat> and I'm not being negative or condescending here. Remember, I do the same thing too. But I'm just trying to be real. Why? So we can own up to the problem and fix the problem. Because when we passively neglect the mission of Jesus because we don't have enough time on our hands to stop for the man on the side of the road. We're not just neglecting the mission of Jesus. We're neglecting Jesus himself. Which consequently means we're also neglecting ourselves because we are his body. Listen, when we don't do what's required for our own bodies, eat the right food, get enough sleep, 
or all those kinds of things that we know we need to do, we know how that works out, and it's usually never good. Well, in the same way, not doing the mission of Jesus, <coughs> which can be considered, in my opinion, a form of self-abuse, cheats us out of the blessing God wants to pour in our lives. That's the abuse. When we're not working the mission of Jesus, we are cheating ourselves, the body of Christ, out of the blessings that God will pour on us <coughs> when we rise up to do the work of the kingdom of God. We need to work the mission of Jesus. And that raises a very good question. <coughs> How can we work the mission of Jesus in our time-deprived world? That's the question of the day. What's the solution? Well, listen, if you will, to what Paul wrote about being a member of the body of Christ in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I have to let you know that I pulled this out of the NIV, but I rewrote a bit of it, so we'll call it the Greg's version of the Bible, just to make sure that we understand what Paul was saying. So if you're going to look in your NIV Bible and you see it's a little whacked out, that's my fault. But Paul wrote this. He said, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole. So it is with the body of Christ. But if the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell? Our bodies have many parts and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. And if one part suffers, all parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the other parts are glad. So it is with all of you. All of you together are Christ's body. And each of you is a part of it. God has appointed some of us to be apostles, others prophets, still others teachers, and those who do miracles, those who have the gift of healing, those who can help others, and those who have the gift of leadership, and those who speak in unknown languages. Friends, together we are the body of Christ. Chris, how's it working for you right now that your foot's not doing its role? Not very good. Are you going to be able to get done everything that you need to get done this week? Do you all hear what I'm saying? How many of you have had your foot in a cast or been sick and couldn't get up and go and do the things? When we're not 100% as a body, the body suffers. When we're not 100% as the body of Christ... The body of Christ suffers, therefore the mission of Jesus suffers, therefore we're not reaching people that God has given us to reach, and therefore souls could be being lost, because we're not doing our part. We're not playing our role. So Paul is advocating that since we are the body, let's start working together like a body should, each part doing its own part. But how can we do this in our time-deprived world? Well, we can be the body and work smart together. We can be the body of Christ and we can work smart by working together. We can all step up and take our place and together we can do it. You see, if everybody does their fair share and gives their fair share towards what we're already doing here at Discovery, you know, that's the amazing thing about this. We don't have to add more staff or generate more money or start more programs. We can really just take what we're already doing as Discovery Fellowship. We have a complete ministry package. We have what it needs for us to be able to go, grow, and gather together in Jesus' name. But if you're the foot and the foot's not doing its job and I got to be the crutches because I'm the boss and all of it falls down to me, 
then parts that I'm supposed to be doing suffer. And we don't get the job done like we should. But when each one of us rises up to do our part, then we can do what we're already doing better. And I guarantee you we will help people discover trust and follow Jesus when we do. You are the kingdom of God's most precious resource. You. And when you rise up to do your part, not on your own, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, and we all do the same, oh my, watch out Eaton County, because we're going to take a big chunk out of that 72,000 people that don't come to church on any given Sunday. Guaranteed. But it's up to each of us to do our part. You are here for a reason. God does not make mistakes. And by the way, since most of you are wondering where you're going to get this time to do what I'm saying or asking, I've got good news. If you do your part, and your part costs you a half hour a week, let's say, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that God will pay you back with an hour. I don't know how much time he'll pay you back with, but he'll pay that time back to you and probably double it. How do I know that? Well, there's a place in the Bible where God was talking to some agricultural givers. The way that they gave to the church, to the temple, was they would take 10% of their crop and donate it. That's called a tithe. And this is what God said to them. And by the way, we don't just tithe crops or money. We need to invest our time, talents, and resources. Money's just part of it. Our time, talent, and resources. And honestly, I, as the pastor of Discovery Fellowship Church, would much rather have your time and talent. But this is what God said to these agricultural givers. He said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing on you so great that you won't have enough room to take it in. Try me, God said. Test me and see that I will keep my word. In other words, if you figure out what your role is here at Discovery Fellowship, and I will be connecting with each of you in the coming several weeks as we begin to put together our post-COVID or mid-COVID or whatever COVID ministry outline, I will be coming to each of you, and if you say yes and you choose to give that half hour a week, maybe an hour a week, for the mission of Jesus... God will give you back more time. You'll still be able to work your job, raise your family, and pursue your dreams. And you'll be able to help the mission of Jesus. And if you don't believe me, give it a test. In one part of the Bible, we're told, don't put God to the test. In this, God said, test me. So test him. When I call you and we talk about what your role is, go ahead and take that step of faith and say, I'm going to try this. Just kind of see if I can fit that half hour for the mission of Jesus into my week. Just test God. He wants you to. He's inviting you to. You cannot outgive God. So that brings us to the big idea for the day. When we discover our role in the body of Christ and then do our part consistently and regularly, our church will do a much better job of helping people discover, trust, and follow Jesus. Does that make sense? Okay, that wasn't the response I was looking for. Does that make sense? It's hard. A lot of you are going, I don't know how I'm going to do this. But you can. We can. Together. As the body of Christ. Listen, friends. God needs you. 
And he is inviting you to be one of his ambassadors to the world by discovering your role in the body of Christ. And then just do it. And let him take care of the rest. To help you on the way to that, I've got a couple of next steps for you. First one, as always, is to take this week's Bible verses. They're down at the bottom of your notes. And just read them this week. Cup of coffee, you the Holy Spirit, just a little time. And just go through those again and let God speak to your heart his way, the message that he wants you to get out of this. Number two, read 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 31. That's where he's talking about the body of Christ. Paul is talking about the body of Christ. Read that, if you would, every day this coming week. Number three, would you choose to pray about discovering your role here at Discovery? Would you just start praying about it? God, don't have lots of time. I work at night, sleep during the day. How's that all going to work? Just start praying about it. Just start asking God to help you start figuring this out and be willing to at least give it a shot. And then finally, number four, pray about helping more at Discovery Fellowship. Once you kind of feel comfortable with stepping forward, we need you to really step up here. There's a lot of work to do. And, and, and I'm okay with you going and spending time volunteering somewhere else. We support most of the ministries in our town uh, that, that many of you go to and support. But we need you here. More than just for an hour on Sunday morning. More than just an hour during a Bible study midweek. We need your time commitment to the mission of Jesus. And when we all rise up, we can be the body of Christ and make a huge difference in our community. Well, guys, that's my talk for the day. Thanks for listening, and I hope that your next steps will be blessed and productive this week as you discover, trust, and follow Jesus more and more. Uh, Let's make our time together, this time together. Let's make this day our ultimate labor day as we discover the real purpose that we have here on this earth and what our true job and labor is. It is helping Jesus help people know God and come to him through faith in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we are the body of Christ, and we confess that our hands and feet haven't been moving like they should concerning the mission of Jesus. Help us here at Discovery and at churches around the world to work smarter together as the body of Christ so we can bring light into this darkness and win souls for you. Father, we are the church. We are the hope on earth. So help us build your kingdom here to the praise of your glorious grace. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.